afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this conversation around uh, you know what's happening in the television business uh, owing to uh, you know COVID nineteen. As uh, it is aptly titled, the show must go on. Uh, we are here today to uh, discuss and figure out you know what's going to happen to our uh, collective lives in the whoever is related to the television broadcasting ecosystem and also the larger media advertising ecosystem. I have a fantastic set of panelists from a very wide uh, and diverse set of companies and backgrounds. Let me introduce them. Uh, we have Mr. Sunil Lula, who arguably is uh, the most powerful man in the broadcasting industry and who decides the face, fate of uh, the channels every Thursday. I'm sure all of you have known him for many years and uh, he brings immense uh, knowledge and insights to the table. Uh, next, we have Abhishek Rege, uh, the CEO of one of the largest production houses in India. And uh, as you all know, uh, as many of you know, I'm sure know, Abhishek has worked in broadcasting uh, in the past, also with companies like Viacom in the US. So welcome on board, Abhishek. Vivek Srivastava, part of the Times uh, television network. Uh, Vivek is a business head and has led their initiatives across the news as well as English entertainment. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us, Vivek. Uh, Mega Tata, Mega Tata, who's uh, in our current avatar, the MD of Discovery uh, Networks. Uh, this is one of the leading uh, uh, non-fiction uh, uh, television networks in India. Uh, thank you, Mega, for being part of it, part of this conversation. And last but not the least, uh, a man who uh, uh, decides allocation of money on uh, majority of the channels in this country, Ajay Gupte, who uh, uh, has not so long uh, back taken over as uh, uh, the MD of one of the largest media agencies in India, Wavemaker. So thank you uh, for coming on board, Ajay. Uh, before I you know, start this conversation, I'd like to uh, lay some context. I, I was, uh, you know, yesterday going through a few reports uh, with regards to what's happening in the uh, broadcasting and the larger media ecosystem. And I came across uh, a couple of reports, one done by Crisil and another one done by uh, uh, Media Partners Asia. So at the peril of sound, sounding alarmist and uh, uh, pessimistic, uh, let me just read out parts of that report and uh, uh, start this conversation. So according to Crisil, the ongoing uh, economic slowdown made worse by COVID-19 is set to impact the Indian media and entertainment industry's revenue by 16%, which is almost 25,000 crores. Uh, so uh, Crisil says the revenue earned by the ME sector this year will be down by almost 16%. Advertising revenue, which accounts for almost 45% of the pie, will see a sharper cut of 18% while subscription revenue, which accounts for the balance 55%, will be relatively uh, resilient and see a you know, lesser uh, uh, cut. Uh, MPA uh, is much more uh, pessimistic. They say that the industry is likely to contract by, contract by 24%. Uh, spends across the sector, across media will get contracted. And obviously, the ones more severely impacted than the others will be cinema, radio, outdoor, uh, and so on. Uh, what is inherently uh, you know, uh, connected with the uh, downturn in the economy and the media advertising sector is the uh, lives of broadcasters, production companies, what happens to them. Uh, just before this conversation started, uh, we were discussing how uh, some parts in Tamil Nadu and Kerala and other South Southern Indian states have restarted production. So let me start this conversation by asking Ajay, we've had two terrible you know, months in April and May. And the question... Uh, uh, on top of everybody's mind right now is how is June looking? Are we going to be any better off? Yeah, now you're, you're right. You know, April and May were uh, were uh, were quite bad. And starting with the last week of March, really, when the lockdown started, uh, we had reductions from all clients, and uh, it has been challenging. Uh, uh, like we spoke a little bit earlier, uh, challenges have been at various levels. Firstly, is production. So. Uh, you know, advertisers, uh, marketers are having difficulty producing uh, because the factories are closed and different states have different regulations, uh, which are not allowing, uh, uh, you know, smooth entry of workers and therefore smooth uh, beginning of production. So it starts at that level. And then you've got the distribution challenges, uh, which face all of us, which face the, the marketers and uh, getting from the factory to the distributor and then from the, the distributor to the retailer. Uh, these are the major challenges that uh, we've been facing. Uh, but we have been seeing an opening in the last uh, you know, uh, few weeks, I guess, uh, starting 
uh, May, uh, things have started improving a little bit. Uh, you know, May was certainly a lot better than April. Uh, and uh, from what I speak with uh, my clients, uh, uh, at least uh, movement of goods between states has improved significantly. Uh, it's not where it should be, obviously not, but it's improved significantly. Also, uh, the ability to get workers into the factory has improved in, in across most states. So even from that perspective, uh, yes, there will be an improvement uh, uh, in terms of production coming out. So uh, if you were to look at uh, essentials and, and you know, uh, groceries and personal products and, uh, and that part of the business, uh, certainly June looks a lot better. For those for those categories, the other categories which are uh, more uh, high value, uh, consumer durables, cars, uh, and and in that territory, uh, will will still struggle. Uh, I'm guessing in June, unless unless there's a sudden opening, uh, which which really we don't see sitting where we are. Uh, so I would break it up into two parts: is the the personal care products and the uh, you know consumer goods, uh, which will certainly look a lot better in June compared to April and May. Uh, the other categories will take a little bit longer. Right. Is that, does that, uh, uh, Megha, does that mirror uh, your assessment of the situation? I mean, you, you run a large broadcast network and your earnings, a lot of them come from advertising revenues. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, yes, I agree with that, Jay, that, of course, uh, and I think everybody in the industry would agree that March to uh, April, May has been pretty much a washout in most of our books. Uh, June is um, indicating to have a, a sliver of hope, uh, but far away from uh, the real world we want to be in. Um, so clearly, advertising is hugely impacted. But it'll be there are interesting uh, theories one are, one is hearing in the market, uh, which at least categories like ours or genres like ours will uh, hopefully be able to benefit if they do really come out true. Uh, you know, this, uh, we were discussing earlier this whole concept of uh, revenge shopping. Um, and I think um, there's some examples which were floated around uh, what happened in China. Uh, like most of you would know that there was this, uh, the Hermes store which got opened after much, uh, after the lockdown and on one day of uh, the first day of opening they sold 2.7 million dollars of bags so clearly the w chinese women were waiting for to go out and do their shopping and high-end shopping and and that's a, that's a classic example so taking from that and seeing what is also happening in us you know there's a the online shopping has been very high even in the in the in during the lockdown so in as much as online shopping is not very strong in india i think there is a there is a segment of the society which is waiting to go out and shop and that would probably help uh, bring the higher end products to be uh, out there to be consumed faster. So things like, um, uh, you know, whether it is uh, consumer goods, whether it's air conditioning or um, uh, high end television for that matter phones uh, that's those are the catches come around and people are ready to revenge shop um, jewelry uh, for example is something I, I think that there is an opportunity and high-end watches and in that luxury segment is where I hope uh, it takes on uh, because that's that's the category actually impacted genres like us hugely because uh, you know, infotainment, lifestyle, that's the space we are in, discovery is in, and that's, uh, that's, those are the high-end categories who spend money on us as well, including automobiles. Uh, so I'm not sure about automobiles as a category, uh, how fast they can get back into action. Though, again, there is an example in, uh, I think, China, again, where Toyota had uh, crazy sales in the, the day they opened up uh, their bookings. So um, hope that those are the categories which will grow. Uh, of course, uh, FMCG remains to be depending on the demand and supply. And I think uh, Ajay and Sunil uh, are better equipped to give those, uh, you know, what's the ground reality on it. But uh, some of the high-end products, I do believe, have the propensity to come back into the, into the game uh, by end of this quarter, uh, by end of this year. In the fourth quarter, yeah. Right. So Neil, so I was, uh, I read a couple of reports, one about the auto sector, Moody's has uh, uh, predicted this year Indian auto sales to fall by almost 30%. And one of the reports done by Nielsen, your sister company, also says that FMCG growth this year will be almost 50% down as compared to the original projections. You work very close with, uh, closely with broadcast networks and 
uh, bark is an integral part of uh, the life of uh, a broadcast network if you were to look at you know this year uh, into the next 3 to 4 quarters what would be your assessment of the situation for the broadcasters and what would you do if you were a broadcaster today sitting in their uh, chair what would you do to kind of uh, you know go after uh, you know more revenues so you need to put things in context volume of television advertising is down approximately 30% compared to jan 35% compared to last year the big event we have ipl did not happen is not happened in the first part of this year i hope it happens in the second part of the year it brings some confidence back it gives reach to many advertisers and it creates great entertainment second thing that's happened is in a lockdown situation when most people are at home uh they have chosen television as the screen of the household let's talk about it let's talk about the smartphone and then let's talk about what we think is going to happen so the initial entire kind of frenzy went towards news and news jumped from 7% to 21% it's now down at about 15% which is still double of what that category was right you mean to say viewership share viewership share right movies were the second to grow kids grew marginally uh so the the the, the ca- these categories added approximately if i am not mistaken 400 view million viewing minutes of television viewing went up by 5% is up up at about 24% now compared to an earlier period so an average home average person which was watching 3 hours 45 minutes of television started watching close to 4 hours 45 minutes down to 4 hours 15 minutes the smartphone consumption went up by an hour per person per day and has gone up again now because a lot of the smartphone owners are also people like us who have been somewhere or the other have got to work from home so they are using it equitably between the work for home syndrome which is to make phone calls do conference calls as well as entertainment of any kind that they want to watch advertising has never seen such a bad time just as viewing went up by 42% advertising is down 30 35% right will this come back no what's gone in april may ain't coming back so is it going to make an impact and this is going to spread over june right i imagine till july when you see monsoon you see some conference if supply chain opens up we even looked at viewing patterns in markets where there were relatively higher green zones and less red zones compared to the ones where there were large red zones there is still an increase in viewership but we are seeing less viewing over there right it's still higher compared to the earlier period Uh, many of the channels which were doing reruns some of the entertainment channels started playing movies some of the channel bought back their old returns the classic turnaround is doordarshan right let's not forget that's that. right yes became number one network right with ramayan and mahabharata started with two advertisers ended with 48 advertisers so where there is great viewing where it's reasonable the advertisers will come i saw some advertising for automotive but i guess that's more brand building and that's a smart market here out there saying okay you know there's great attention to advertising there's great attention to content let me go place it but 50% of the basket is 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 what is called essential service essentials right foods uh, personal care the kind that we are discussing over here is largely that and i think that will continue i don't think we should expect a vector return in june with the monsoons coming in i think june will be a month where if there's relaxation of production for television factories transportation the supply chain starts improving from where it is today possibly the first time we may see something is july i look at it that if i take the periods of march april and may and i look at we are on the 27th i have data in this morning till the 25th if i look at those 25 days they are almost similar in the three months there is some change now between may and march or may and april but they are almost similar and the last 10 days of the month last 8 days of the month always have more advertising effect yes. i think we should expect a haircut on a volume basis perhaps 10% perhaps more compared to last year the same thing will happen in digital because if you want good digital it's programmatic it's not cheap right it may convert to commerce but the same thing will happen across the board same thing will happen in tv print radio everywhere we should expect a steep haircut i don't know who's going to be right and that's not our job but unfortunately it's not going to be a good year 
Yes. In fact, I uh, recall uh, uh, three weeks back, Martin Surreal made a statement saying the recovery is going to be a reverse square root, uh, which means, uh, you know, obviously, a, you know, downturn initially, then a little bit of pickup and then a plateau. Is that uh, what your company is uh, looking at, Vivek, uh, when you are looking at this year? I'm sure uh, many of you are not really haven't thought about what happens two quarters down the line. But business managers need to start planning for a slightly medium-term outlook rather than living week to week. So I agree with uh, almost everyone when they said that uh, June should be better than April and May. Uh, I see a little bit of turnaround happening in quarter two. Uh, that's when you will find a lot of these uh, you know, lockdown situations getting out. So for example, uh, please remember that uh, major uh, you know, GDP-driven markets, which is Mumbai, Delhi, uh, UP, MP, Gujarat, all these will at least continue uh, their lockdown specifically in the bigger centers uh, till about 15th of, of June. So therefore, it effectively means that about 30% of the country will be, uh, you know, in some sort of a lockdown or, you know, or other uh, till 15th of June. And then you have to, you know, moving forward uh, as well, I don't see in the next two months uh, major relaxations happening, uh, whether it comes to opening of public places or opening of, uh, you know, uh, malls and other, uh, other institutions. So therefore, uh, uh, June will be a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of a better uh, result as compared to April to May. But Q2 will be a gradual uh, increase. My sense is by the time we get to the season, which is September, October, November, that's when we should start comparing last year to this year. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and if all goes well, we should be uh, in the same range as last year. Mind you, last year was also not a very great year from my economy. Yes. So therefore... Uh, you know, if we say that we'll be in the same range of last year, we are still less than last last year. I think that's that's a uh, that's yeah. A I think uh, a lot of people are hoping that by the time the festive season comes around, we would uh, be back to roughly the indexed number of last year. Though I think that remains an optimistic assessment, given that a large number of companies in this country are facing at significant top line cuts, and their immediate priority is first to save livelihoods, and then second, as Sunil mentioned, is to save their bottom lines and. Um, unfortunately, parts of the marketing spend or the project, the budgeted marketing spend for this year might end up going into projecting, protecting bottom lines. Abhishek, uh, production companies obviously are entirely dependent upon revenues from television uh, uh, houses. Uh, it's a double-edged kind of thing where, you know, uh, obviously all the television networks need fresh content. So they, uh, they have to do it for reasons of, you know, uh, uh, the nature of their business and also for the fact that you know, it's a very competitive environment. Cutting down on fresh programming really becomes counterproductive after a while. And as uh, we all know, uh, when, you know, it stops raining at the top of the mountain, the streams at the bottom all dry up and production companies eventually earn from what's happening in the television larger ecosystem. So what is your uh, sense of, you know, where the production ecosystem is headed? If we leave out the immediate part in terms of, you know, where shooting is starting, when it is starting, not starting, if you were to look at, say, the next three quarters going up till March, what do you think the three, four things will happen in the television production system? I know for sure one thing we all know that the TV companies are already talking to production partners to figure out ways of reducing costs. What else What else uh, do you see happening? So, um, I think, like, at least, like everyone said and Vivek also said, I think largely see uh, from a revenue from the for the broadcaster's perspective, you will see an uptake with the festival season starting maybe even August mid to end or September onwards. Uh, for the production houses in particular, uh, like you said, I think the original programming is going to be critical. While all these conversations happen, there's also been a lot of standing costs that have been incurred over the last two months and will going into June as well will be incurred. That plus the cost of being COVID ready as we go into shoots down the line until and until uh, until and unless a vaccine comes out and all of that, there's going to be a lot of uh, measures that we will have to take to stay safe and continue shooting so as to not got, go into another issue afterwards. So all those will actually affect the costs on ground as well. I think one of the first things that broadcasters would look at is compare it to the revenues and maybe have lesser programming on air um, rather than just go for the jugular and cut down on all costs. Second bit could be looked at is some shows that are very expensive uh, that could have an impact um, maybe through large VFX driven shows, etc. would come down to maybe what is the regular uh, daily fiction show kind yes. of a range. So I think those are some things that will, that will happen. 
but at the same time what we're also looking at is there is traction for what um, like sunil said when you have viewership advertisers will come to that so there are certain shows that they will go all gango um, one of the key reasons is also this has been this will be rather uh, even a, a bigger restart than there was when we've had a couple of occasions of blackouts on broadcasters due to union strikes this is a bigger one because it's almost like a restart there's no 10 to 12 weeks of not connecting with those characters uh, who knows what the effect is going to be so you have to take that much of extra effort to go back into it um coming back to the point that mega also made on um, revenge shopping i think um, more even with the luxury brands i think even the normal e-tailing would become a big advertising point i think because yeah. uh, look at amazon day one three times the sales on an average is happening i i pretty much can see even as an example in my building the watchman's kiosk looks like a little amazon store uh, just stocked with boxes all around so i think people are desperately wanting they'd buy a small knife for 50 rupees but they just want to do something that they've not been able to do and i think that's going to drive a lot of the demand soon enough so yeah i think one July of the around. one of the big trends of this uh, digitization of uh, you know the retail economy which was already happening over the last 3 4 years will just you know skyrocket not just across the larger cities but the smaller you know centers the rural semi rural the smaller urban centers and i think one of the biggest challenges for brands will be how to get on to that with adequate amount of learning and a big challenge will be uh, for agencies also to how to learn to connect with consumers through e-commerce rather than the you know format but let me just come to the back to the television part you know i think there is a larger consensus than that you know uh, a significant amount of advertising revenues that tv companies have earned uh, last year will get shaved off this year two months have already been a wash out june uh, even if it improves it's not going to be significantly better so you're talking one quarter gone going forward next three quarters the impact will linger on which in essence means there will be lesser money on the table and as we all know television uh, being the largest in terms of you know advertising uh, pie in this country uh, has delivered for advertisers year after year but now i think every single spend that is made on tv every program that is sponsored every 5 crore rupee or a 2 crore rupee spend uh, that is done on television is going to be looked at by the advertiser and the agencies with a magnifying glass in terms of the roi that it delivers so i want to ask the panelists do you think the way the advertiser agencies are looking at television will fundamentally change right not just for the short term not just for the next one two quarters but then beyond that sunil what is your sense on that see from the advertisers as well as the agencies that i have tried to get a sense of they still have great belief that television is great is the best medium for drawing large reach it's good for putting out the big picture over there yes right? the, it's the messaging over there is unified to the household so it's still the best medium for that uh there are advertisers who may not be able to make a equitable spend on television to make a big impact and they may decide to put that money down digital video and other digital products and services because you know that may be for them a smarter way to allocate their expenditure for their brands yeah it's also a function of what happens is a big boss going to come back is a, a ipl going to happen are some of the big properties like a film fair award and things like that going to happen which take away a lot of money or is it going to be like what's happened on the digital side where people have replayed their concerts some of them are singing from home what is the mode in which we operate i think it's speculative because we are all guessing we don't know what's going to happen what is true is the point that you said that when there is new programming or renewed programming because you know there has been a 8 to 10 week there will be a 10 week gap minimum from the time you went off right so do you come back with the same story new story fresh ideas take it forward what do you do those broadcasters that do this extremely well will find advertisers want to participate in that show in that programming right because that's where the premium is going to go because they'll want to queue up to get that best attention out there uh I think if you look at what has happened in the, in the news case, some of them intelligently integrated uh, uh, messages in the key communication that was happening there. They bought in webinars, 
Some of the news channels experimented with formats like music. It did not work. Some of the houses which had both OTT play as well as television play put the OTT shows on TV. That did not work. Some of them brought back old programming, Nostalgia, Rama and Mahabharata and Krishna and all of that. That seems to have worked. So I think there's a sociological undercurrent, right, of want to see something that was good, positive, which is out over there too. So as a broadcaster, I guess you've got to look at what audience you've retained. In the news case, we saw in the initial period of March, people came to news and they checked many channels out and then they settled back. So that volume went from 16 channels in a home to 24. It's back at 20. 20 is still bigger than 16. That is checked 25% more. That's right. Now people are staying longer on a channel of their choice. So if I was a news channel viewer and I was watching channel A, I'm staying longer on channel A when I find that programming is working with me than I did earlier. Because my distraction elements are fewer. Right? The younger audiences have also moved a lot to watching TV as well as also watching shows which are on the digital stream. So that is a real opportunity for the digital service providers. Right? It's a real genuine opportunity. Even for news, if you your channel is dated is is the top and somebody is watching something else and I want to watch that channel. Again, we are seeing that on digital, people are watching different news channels than they are watching on TV. So when I put the, just say for whatever's word, the ranking, right, as if that was important, but if I put the ranking down, they're not aligned anymore. Right. Right. What is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and news is not the same on digital. Right? Yes. It's changing over there. So I think it's very difficult. I think it's important to bring back storytelling. Now you may continue or you may bring in a new way of telling that story. Right. Some of it's going to depend on the risk capital. I do know that most broadcasters are renegotiating their costs. Yes. They need to. Right. Uh, so it's going to be about, uh, it, there will be some feel good programming. I think uh, Mega's point of revenge shopping also works on TV. You know, what do you bring back, which has big impact, which is new, unusual and unique that I want to watch that I missed out on. Right. I mean, to me, and, and please take this with a pinch of salt. Ramayana was exactly that. I saw it in 1986. Not everybody was born around this panel, I believe, in 1986. Okay. So at the end of the day, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of young people came in to watch that show because they had never seen it. Right. So that is her uh, idiomatic reference of revenge viewing, right, in a way of speaking. So I think you have to say that if you've had a good show, continue that show. If you want to bring in something new, when TV does come back to live fresh programming, there's a big opportunity and rankings may change. You know, the pecking order yes. may change. Let me take this to if Ajay. Add, you know, yeah, Mega, you, you, you want to say something? No, just thought of, I'll, I'll add to Sunil, uh, Sunil's point, you know, I, in as much as Sunil highlighted movies and uh, kids and news as a genre to have uh, taken, a, you know, uh, has taken the higher uh, consumption um, metric, but even infotainment for that matter had a big growth, to be honest, and, and uh, you know, Discovery being a leader in that obviously saw the benefit of that. And we, uh, and we probably are the only genre which was able to bring in premieres in this lockdown period as well because most of the GDC guys could not bring in the new content. We already had a lot of content to premiere. Right. Uh, not only did we premiere shows, we also premiered, uh, we also launched our Discovery Plus uh, OTT, right? And that, that right on the day of the lock, lockdown, uh, we launched, can you hear me? Yeah. On the yes, day of the lockdown, uh, we launched uh, Discovery Plus. So uh, I think, am I audible? You're audible. Uh, your video has gone off, but you're audible. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, and, I, and I believe to, to the point you highlighted, you know, what is the way we should be looking at things differently? And I think this is a time for advertisers and uh, agencies to uh, revisit far, you know, it, it can't be as black and white earlier. And this is probably a good time to relook at the way how the spends are done and to, to, to create a metric of ROI, which is a little more than just a black and white. 
uh, space because there is so much more you can do with the brands which is integrated to the content uh, which can be integrated to the content and i think solutions which the which every broadcaster can bring to the table which yeah. goes beyond the black and white analysis right. is is something uh, worth its while to look at in this market because this is what's happening globally uh, it's not about just the cprp deals it is how you're creating far more integrated approaches for the brands to go yeah. beyond which uh, which is something i would uh, i would think would work for brands as well so ajay let me take this to you that's a good point you raised megha you know as i said uh, there's a consensus that there, this year there'll be lesser money to go around right and digital is uh, clearly as a media as a medium really snapping at television's heels over the last you know 2 3 years uh, there's going to be significantly enhanced demands on accountability from television right we might not have especially with lesser sports properties around right uh, we don't know when ipl will happen a lot of other sporting events have been cancelled so fundamentally do you see uh, you know the accountability roi metrics from television changing from what they currently are because a lot of television money uh, is put in obviously there is roi currently that's why the money comes in but do you think clients will now demand sharper roi from uh, the money that is being spent on television and how will that happen Ajay, I think you're mute. Mute. Yeah. Taking a step back, I I agree with what uh, Sunil said a little earlier. Is that uh, I think the general belief uh, in television is there across uh, clients and uh, the gen genuine uh, you know the general trust that uh, it's a it's a medium that has worked uh, in the past uh, certainly exists. Uh, it's true that uh, you know. Uh, given the current circumstance in terms of uh, uh, money at play uh, definitely uh, there will be uh, challenges on the current uh, on the current way of uh, evaluation um, and uh, while while that is a currency that we are all very comfortable with so uh, it will take it will take a while obviously for uh, for a new currency to uh, to come into play i think what what is uh, essential at some point of time is uh, is to uh is to also be able to look at uh, you know uh, to find a way to have a uh, uh, cross media impact because uh, uh, that is certainly going to become all the more important uh, like you said uh, digital is is becoming uh, is becoming stronger and stronger by the day uh, a lot of news consumption is happening on digital we know that gaming has taken off uh, tremendously uh and then uh, the ability to move uh, seamlessly from television communication to uh to digital communication and to uh to follow audience and to take a seamless uh, piece of communication across media uh, will become uh, extremely crucial uh and in that sense i believe uh, uh, cross media measurement of some form uh will be essential to uh, and is what clients will look for uh to be able to understand the the effect of of their uh, their investments uh, better and also to be able to derive better value uh, in terms of uh, taking down the investments uh, a little bit uh, down the chain you know uh, we're talking about trps right now and cprps and that's that's the only metric that we've been using but uh, how can we look at how it is translating uh, further down the the tunnel and once yeah. once you're able to con connect it with digital uh, there's a lot more uh, granular data that you can get uh, and hence the if if we are able to create that bridge in some fashion uh, i think that is something that uh, advertisers will definitely value uh, going forward uh, also you know we've seen uh, ott taking off really um, in the last in in the covid times uh, and and there's a lot of content new content come out there because it has been available and people haven't been exposed to it uh, getting on to ott obviously is a function of you know having the hardware as well as the bandwidth which is a challenge but it, it is growing now uh, uh, with ott coming in uh, one one clear thing is you know what people want to watch and 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 how they are they are moving the choices are a lot a lot a lot better uh, and uh, i think uh, you know there will be some learnings that could come from there uh, in terms of understanding uh, understanding them better uh, and 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 these are things that even content which uh, the television uh you know the television channels could pick up 
uh, which 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 is not exposed to the non OTT uh, consumer. So I think these are a few things that will come into play in the in the next few. Um, I, I also think that you know some of the tools that broadcasters have dabbled in mm. in the last four or five years, especially mm. uh, with regards to geo targeting. I remember uh, Star launched Ad Shop, uh, I think five years back. Z has had a tool. I'm uh, not able to recall the name, which mm. allows you to target specific markets, and especially in a scenario where some of the states or markets are in red zones, others are orange, and there are balance which are green. Green zones can easily be reached out through geo geo targeting. So this might be a time where you know something like that could take off because it really new, never flew, you know, yeah. on television geo targeting. Yeah. Mega might be in a better position to answer that, but I think that might kind of you know uh, work for broadcasters and also provide them a extra solution to go to clients because some clients might not be any more uh, interested at least for the short time to do a you know a countrywide bombardment of their messaging because some uh, markets might not even be open for them to kind of get their goods across. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely, uh, Naval, and it's how, and I think a lot of broadcasters, uh, the key broadcasters, have a OTT offering today. It's about how the bo both can be combined and brought as a solution to the advertiser yes. is also a way to look at it. You know, this is an advantage. It, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be an and economy. And and that's the that's up to the brands and the broadcaster to have related effort. I think that's one. Um, of course, targeting that that is the benefit a digital platform brings to you, and you're able to really get into the specifics. And that that comes uh, that comes with the tools and technology the medium itself provides. But I think it's it's also about how you can be you how you can reinvent in producing and creating content integration. You know, brand solutions which you bring to the table. Which can, like to today's point, add value to the brand. So it's really yes. how how you can define that. The question, and and this is nothing new. It's always been there. This option has always been available. That's right, yeah. The problem happens when you get down to the business, right? And that somebody has to have the gumption to take those calls and say, okay, this is what we should put our invest in and take the you know and 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 take a bet on. Because that's where, to Ajay's point, was you know then we need to create a metric and we need to have some way to evaluate that, and then it becomes a chicken and egg kind of a situation. So uh, who who blinks first is really the conversation, and maybe this is a good time. You know, this is a good time to experiment this year because in many ways, a lot of clients, broadcasters, have taken 2020 as a washout year. So why not experiment? on things which you probably were a bit more scared to do in, in normal times. In yeah. these in the new normal world, try and experiment in things you might just be pleasantly That's a good surprised. Point. Yeah. And I think yeah. I would urge all the brands uh, you know to to take that risk and put the money there, have those conversations with broadcasters, create an opportunity which will work for both of us. And uh, you might just be surprised what the outcome could be. Let me ask Sunil uh, a specific question on this. Sunil, it's 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 uh, kind of uh, you know known from the past recessions that uh, when there's lesser money to go around, obviously uh, every brand seeks uh, more ROI. And one of the ways to measure uh, ROI is improved measurability of where the money is going in. Uh, so two questions for you. One, uh, uh, since Bark runs the measurement uh, system for uh, broadcasters. What are the things that you think we can do within the Bark system to increase uh, the kind of uh, measurability for broadcasters, which will help advertisers? Second is the you know the kind of joining at the hip for digital video content and television measurement could not really happen in its entirety. Do you think now is the time to do it? And uh, do you think if it is not done, then broadcasters might be worse off versus digital? I'll answer both the questions. Uh, we have a number of tools and services that some of our broadcaster clients use fairly vigorously for enhancing their content sharpness. Even at this stage, many of them are using these applications because I think some of them believe, rightly so, if they can retain audiences, they will be able to hold them through the next many months to come. So it's not just an episodic event of peak viewing but it is attracting new audiences and holding on to it. And there have been changes that we have seen certain broadcasters are making either in programming or the approach towards audiences. 
Uh, we are also releasing uh, in June, I hope, uh, deeper analytical tools, which will help both the agencies as well as the broadcasters. Why I say agencies is many broadcasters ask the agencies to kind of go invest into this for sharper analysis, right? So we are hoping to bring that in, that in June. I just need to see how things play out over the next few days. Uh, so there are tools being introduced which allow this to happen. For advertisers in specific, we have uh, done for a few advertisers, large advertisers, what we call as cohorts, which is cohorts. Yeah, which is working right. with certain audiences. So let's say you're interested in women, just because that's a commonplace notion in television. Right? Is you're interested in women of a certain age and profile, we work with some of the advertisers and their agencies to actually look at their interest so that they can sharply target their spends. So if you're an advertiser, you're targeting women who want to do food that is easy to make at home, then you know what their pattern of viewing is, you know what ads they are watching, and you know what to target to them and whether your advertising is working with them or not. So they are buying their media according to those patterns. And we are, in, we are investing more in that. So it's working at two ends. One is the broadcast end for content. The other is the broadcast end for advertising. So it can work with the agency and the broadcaster because that's a strong and close relationship of evaluation. And then with advertisers from a purpose of planning. So if you're going to be a significant spender on television, it gives you an effort to plan better. So that talks to the TV component, right? Uh, a lot of our plans to do things on TV have, we've got to take a break for the simple reason of we can't get on the ground, right? right? But that will get picked up and we will be, we'll, we will cover that ground fairly fast. On digital, we are very, we are working on three models, which is to look at our ability at the very worst case to measure television, to measure advertising on digital and to lend our neutrality to that because most of the digital Advertising now comes from branded houses, right? If a platform is is uh, offering you uh, time or offering you space on their platform, the results come only from the platform. There is no neutral body to give it to you, right? And not to say that those platforms are giving you incorrect data, but it's just that you got platform A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you're not able to put this together. So we are working to create one for advertising, the content piece of it has its own challenges because everybody has their own tech and nobody wants you to kind of get into the garden, right? So even if you get the advertising part right, it will at least address some component and we are looking to hopefully bring that fused product. Now, I don't know what timeline we'll talk of because a lot of things are changing. We don't even know tomorrow up on June when the lockdown gets lifted, say in the city of Bombay. We don't know it for sure. So, Timelines may change, but we will have a product that will put together television and digital at the very worst in 2021. Right? And then we'll build on to this to have a better product. Maybe it'll take a year or more because also a function of investments. If the industry is not seeing good days, they are not going to invest more in paying for all of this. Right? That's right. That's so, true. So it's a function of that, but I think we will have something that is a good working product for digital advertising at least. And then we will get to the entire ecosystem of digital and television, hopefully coming into one table. Yes, that helps because, you know, it if you're able to combine there, things there, but the first start is at least let's see at the end of the day, let's remember we are a currency of advertising, right? So if it's that 30,000 odd crores, that's the currency that's used to kind of trigger of the 30,000 crores now going up and down because of the economic and the uh, yes. safety changes. But otherwise that's a currency. Now if you can bring the digital video currency in the same way, aligned to TV, it gives a better, it gives a better metric to everybody at the end of the day. Yes. That keeps us neutral. We are not here to suggest take A or B. It keeps a neutral. Sorry. Sorry, Vivek. Go ahead. So Vivek, uh, the question I wanted to come to you uh, was that one of the things that we have seen the large um, media tech players doing over the last uh, couple of years successfully is also go after the long tail of the market, which is the SMEs. Obviously, that part of the market is very uh, badly impacted, but what that does is that kind of uh, reduces your dependence on large corporate advertising money. And news channels have also done that to a very limited extent. Uh, in Hindi, it has been done, not so much in English, and much lesser in you know entertainment uh, and other channels. Do you think 
television, the broadcasting ecosystem has the capability to go after the SME advertising in, in, a, in a large uh, number because that could be a savior uh, next 12 months uh, given that large corporate advertising might not really pick up. So uh, from a uh, business standpoint, I think the business models per se will change and the business models per se will change not only from an advertising standpoint, which is getting the SMEs or any other segments like these onto television, which traditionally have not advertised. In fact, you know, uh, for us specifically on the news side, we do a lot of work with the, with the SMEs because we have the ability to, you know, uh, you know, uh, give customized solutions to those uh, people on the, on our platform, whether it's on ground, uh, digital or on air. Uh, but I think what is more important is that this is one, uh, this period of the last two months and the next a few months that will be, it will change the way we are planning our entire business. So therefore, one, from the production side, like you rightly mentioned, number of people on uh, sets will go down, number of uh, people who are uh, earlier producing will go down. For example, for us, we used to have OB vans which were going everywhere. We don't use OB vans anymore. We use live view as a, as a software, which effectively means that you have cut down on a whole piece of machinery that used to go uh, running around. Uh, and the same thing will happen in any and every aspect. Uh, Sunil mentioned, re, uh, you know, all the broadcasters are going and renegotiating the deals. I think that is that is bound to happen on the on the cost side. The efficiencies on cost, which have, which you know traditional broadcasters have been, uh, you know, uh, lagging with for the last last five to ten years. Uh, will need to be reassessed and 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 relooked at uh, specifically in this scenario and uh, the third point which is the the point of advertisers i think there are a whole host of advertising uh, you know communities which have not been traditionally on television uh, which have to be brought in now which which is the format that they get into uh, onto television will be very different so for example i don't see smes coming onto television for regular advertising or brand building that's not their you know their scope but yes uh, you know, can you give them a customized solution to help them grow their business, understand right. their part, uh, you know, greater detail and work with them closely? I'm sure that there, there are, uh, there are, uh, you know, platforms that we can create to, to, to offer to them. So those, in those places, yes, I'm sure that there will be a lot of more uh, activeness, which will be there. And uh, the, the key, uh, you know, the key impetus for all the advertisers and the, uh, and the sales guys will be to, you know, really increase the client pool right now. Yes, and use geo-targeting to kind of, you know, dovetail into that and because SME uh, naturally won't have the kind of money that a Procter & Gamble and uh, Unilever would have. Abhishek, let me come to, uh, you know, you with the point Vivek made on production monies. Naturally, uh, you know, there is lesser money to go around when it comes to uh, production. And there are two large components when we are talking television production. One is obviously the cost of production, the sets, the equipment, the machinery you're using and the other part is talent. And talent yeah. cost really varies from the lowest end to the, you know, really high end. True. What is your sense True. on both of these components? Where do you think the hit will happen more? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, as you yourself mentioned, uh, the amount of production, the volume might go down as well as the scale of production in many cases might go down. Uh, so given these two, what do you think will happen to both of these components and uh, how does it impact the production, production ecosystem? So I think if you look at it from a percentage perspective, um, there's lesser scope in cutting the BTL primarily because anyways, those are line item driven, budget driven right, yeah. exercises that happen. Um, and obviously there are a lot of new cost factors that will come in as we get into this new era of um, the way we need to look at all processes. Uh, on the talent side, there could be a much larger revision either sorry, either with the existing talent or with by bringing in new talent on a lot of um, a lot of shows, etc. And I think that is how the battle would be. Uh, also, largely when we look at uh, scripted and non-scripted, this is an approach that largely happens in non-script. Uh, but for scripted, where anyways it's a per day artist and however big they are, there's not too much of scope of um, cutting down the values to make a huge difference. I think um, you will bring it down to the type of content storytelling and all will be uh, you know with a big push on how do we kind of keep people engaged and everything but at the same time um, not maybe too many of period or vfx heavy shows could be made uh, at least in the short term until the broadcasters get a strong footing on where their revenue is headed to match up with the new production dynamics so i think these are the kind of broad ranges that you could look at uh, obviously the 
type of show that they want to get so like we've been discussing roi on advertisers on broadcasters and on ratings uh, similarly that mirrors itself on the programming we make that's right yes we don't really touch base with the with enough of uh, a reach and interest and buzz from uh, viewers then that's going to impact those shows as well um so the last cases would form the basis for this but we will be uh, much more sharply looked at from a rating perspective i'm guessing uh, as we go ahead so would you guess that salman uh, would charge much less i don't make guesses at that level beyond my pay grade <laughs> ajay let me come to you you know because you work with a you know a set of advertisers across the board one question on top of everybody's mind is how long will rates remain under pressure and a connected uh, question to that rates have been under pressure for many years i mean that era is gone where rates were going up so but the point is right now it is unusual time right now and rates have come under significant pressure how long is that likely to continue and a related to question to that is due to covid uh, a large number of pitches have been put on hold once this opens up that process will restart and as we've seen in the last uh, you know i would say 36 months plus and minus is that uh, pricing has become a very integral part of pitches it was always so but now even more over the last 2 3 years now covid has kind of you know one can say open the sort of you know stable doors so there's no kind of bottom in some cases how does this situation impact what happens to pitches after that because you know pricing will has been and will continue to remain a very integral integral part of you know uh, client working with an ex agency versus a y you're on mute uh, still i keep i keep forgetting <laughs> yes so uh, to uh, to answer your first question in terms of pricing yes pricing has uh, currently taken certainly taken a beating uh, and uh, it's a function of uh, you know uh, cost pressures everywhere and it's bound to happen uh, and also the fact that uh, uh, demand is also low and and hence uh, the pricing are going down uh, i think this will be there certainly till uh, till june uh depending on how fast we recover uh, post that but uh uh the pricing will certainly be at uh, will be at the challenge in the next uh, at least half month and a half uh going uh, and and you're right you know uh, pricing is is almost uh, uh, one of the most essential parts of of every pitch uh and 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 that is about basically giving uh, more value uh, in some in some fashion um yes uh, it is it is going to continue that way and um, covid is 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 kind of going to reset uh, where we are so obviously uh, if um, at at our current time we are uh, lower than uh, normal state uh, it will take some doing to get back to normal state and pitches which come in this uh, period will uh, are bound to uh, attract rates which are uh, uh which are lower than uh, than steady state uh so uh given and and it it would it get far more difficult if it stays a little bit longer but assuming things remain till june uh, or or you know july august is when we start coming back um we expect uh, a slight uh, a slight reduction further when uh, when in pitches which come towards the end of the year because you're right there's no pitches which are happening i mean most pitches have been pushed towards the end of the year and uh, there will be a re- there will be a correction and then there will be a further reduction possibly uh, which will come come up so that's not good news for broadcasters if it isn't, you know it isn't good news it isn't good news unless things change dramatically you know unless we make a, a, a rebound and 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 economy is back on track and people are consuming because finally everyone is under cost pressures right now cost pressures are so high it that's is right. going to translate it is going to translate down uh, down the round the road to all of us uh, i think that's a reality we have to live with so let me ask a slightly more generic question what happens to uh, you know jobs in the industry uh, both on the advertising side of the business i was moderating a session last week with some marketers and one of the key uh, objectives for right now for them right now is not obviously to think about you know where to spend marketing monies but to save livelihoods and i mentioned to him that the money that you spend on uh, marketing is also generating livelihoods in the media and the advertising sector so it's all connected it's part of a very long value chain 
So what happens to that? Because uh, right now people are extremely anxious. Some of them have been laid off. Unfortunately, many of others have uh, uh, had to take salary cuts. Uh, uh, and the future is very uncertain from, from what you were telling us. And if uh, a broadcaster is looking at you know earning 20-30% lesser revenue this year, obviously the first thing they will do is uh, to look at uh, doing that with lesser number of people. So what would you, uh, what would you, what's your outlook on, you know, what, what's the job and career uh, outlook for the industry this year? Mega, why don't you uh, tell us? Yeah, no, well, that's, so you've hit a very sensitive uh, nerve, I guess. Uh, everyone is, uh, it's a, and there is no right or wrong answer here. I think businesses are taking decisions uh, which are right for the business, uh, but uh, it is obviously uh, impacting individuals at uh, at a level which is obviously they, they can't be e any easy words to say uh, to how they are going, what are the impact they are going through. But I think um, uh, every organization probably is looking at it there from their own perspective. Uh, you know, uh, clearly there is a hiring freeze for sure there is no more hiring going to be happening for a while yeah. uh, how each business is going to take those calls uh, whether to keep people cut salaries or let go are you know frankly none of us can have a point of view because each business has to take those decisions what's right for the business um, and uh, um, but but i would i would think that there is uh, it, it is a situation there is no shying away from that fact there will be a lot of people in the job market, uh, very talented, but no opportunities uh, for them to look into. How those people can go and look for uh, for them to come back into the business, either good, you know, whether it's uh, uh, existing organizations or new businesses altogether. I don't know. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. It is. It is unfortunate, and it's. It's not only in India, we are seeing this happening right. globally. Uh, yeah. some, are, some are dealing it uh, sensitively, uh, some are being ruthless, some are being, um, uh, you know, more um, professional and some are being extremely unprofessional. So there are all kinds, it takes all kinds to make this world. Um, but this is a genuine situation which has impacted our industry as well. And I, I mean, yeah, there's no, there's no easy way. Obviously, there's no easy way to this. It is, it is, yeah. it is you know, reality. Another, another uh, point I, I'd like to submit here is that, uh, you know, when it comes to revenues of television companies, perhaps it might be, uh, I know there is a TREI cap on, you know, what can you charge on, uh, you know, content per channel, which is a very unusual thing. Like what, you know, some of the papers have done, newspapers have done, they've gone behind a paywall and they've mm -hmm. done it out of kind of, you know, compulsion because there is lesser advertising revenue to go around. Vivek, is there, is there a opportunity for news channels to monetize better? Because as we know, a large number of news channels are free to air right now and uh, good contest, uh, content costs money to make. So why uh, keep dishing it out uh, free to the viewer, especially in a scenario when there is lesser advertising and hence, the reach that free FTA channels or free to air channels deliver kind of becomes less relevant at this point of time. So from our standpoint, we've always maintained that uh, news cannot be free in the country. If, if you are giving news uh, free to air then effectively you are either, uh, you know, compromising on the quality of the, of the content or uh, focusing on, on certain number of uh, audiences that are not of value to the advertiser. I think that's, that's, that is a clear cut thing. The moment you cut down uh, DD dish last year, we saw the difference that came into a lot of free to air players and that was uh, essential there. So uh, yes, from a long-term perspective, if this, uh, you know, uh, uh, slowdown continues, the free to air players will face a lot more heat than the, uh, you know, pay players because we have a second line of revenue, which is relatively, I will not say it's completely stable, but which is relatively more stable as compared to advertising. And obviously because the consumption is high at this point in time, you know, you require, uh, you know, news is really your first port of call when it comes to information. Uh, you know, uh, people are not really uh, removing news channels from their bouquet. So, so, so I don't see that, 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 uh, you know, that, that practice to, to go away. And certainly a lot of the free to air uh, news channels will face the heat. And in fact, not only news channels, I would pre presume a lot of the free to air channels will 
uh, will face, face the heat, whether it comes to music, whether it comes to movies, whether it comes to, you know, regular general uh, GC advertising, all those uh, channels will find it far more difficult to survive if the slowdown continues because most of the free to air channels, with the exception of news, news at least they are, some of the free to air channels are in the top four or top five channels. If you look at the other genres, all the other free to air channels are actually a part of the long tail. Yes. So that effectively means that they are already, you know, uh, commanding a lesser share of revenue. And in this period when the, the pie gets smaller and the top two or three players are taking most of the pie, these guys will far, find it far more difficult to, to struggle and, um, and thereby uh, you could see a few, uh, you know, unfortunate casualties mm -hmm. this as we move along. Sunil, what's your sense? Is this an opportunity to, for broadcasters to earn more money from consumers since advertising is kind of not uh, solid? See, advertising and the GDP are interlinked. If the industry says that we need to get the GDP up, they have to advertise. And I think the industry will want that. It's a function of time now. Supply chain and other things interrelated, right? People who have gone away. There are millions of people who left their place of abode and gone to their villages or their earlier residences. So this, this will take time to come back. As if when it comes back, the economy will get kick-started. Let us not be such big doomsayers. Yes, we have to be pragmatic that in the short term, conserving cash, expending less is what most of us are going to adopt. But we've got to bring this back together. We are collectively responsible for a more sustainable economy. At Bark too, we've done the same. We've cut back salaries, all of us have volunteered cuts, etc. Costs have come down. We are trying to make that business far more sustainable. But there will come a time when we will need to invest back. So you can't throw the good out of, you can't throw your strength out of the window. For content to be charged, right? So which is subscription. If you look at the OTT players to try and learn from them, right. they grew because there was no option on TV. Couldn't get outside of news, I couldn't get other new stuff, right? Everything else was a replay and it was good to see some of the replays. Retro always works within a context. But New programming was only on the digital streaming contents, which either had it in the library, had not showcased it earlier, or could put forward things. YouTube has been a big beneficiary of this, where music concerts and things like that have gone live and people have raised money and done things. Will people pay more for TV? I don't think so in the short term. We've seen a lot of charging out. You know, people who've not renewed their boxes. Uh, two, a lot of homes which people have left they are not going to renew their box for some time to come. So if you have to go subscription oriented, you really got to have a smart and a sharp product over there. If it's going to be the TV product, then it is only catch up. And for catch up, it's better to have an advertising solution than to have a subscription solution over there. So you will see. So if, if there's a big sporting event that comes in and it's on a digital platform, as well as a TV platform, both will stand together. But if it's the same show on TV going to digital, I don't see the money moving out there. That's well. correct. Right? If it's different content, yes, there's a, pro there's a prospect of it happening over there. Subscription India will take time to pick up. What's happened now is the events are related to the episodes that have happened. I think the other thing which yeah. now will happen or, you know, um, I mean, at an overall business level, uh, is because this work from home has taught us that we it is possible to work from home, right? Uh, and have the businesses run out of home. So the overall way of running the businesses will change uh, and which will impact, in my view, the real estate, uh, the way the real That's estate... That's right, the commercial real estate in the economy is... Estate. So do you really need that many big offices? Can you work... Um, you know, a few days a week, hence you can have rotational staff coming in. And these are the uh, genuine questions all of us uh, at our businesses are uh, probably discussing and evaluating and rightfully so, uh, because that's probably going to be the new normal as well when we go, uh, when we go out in the, you know, in, into the some form of normalcy. So that is the other thing which will happen, you know, and which will impact every way, all, all of us, whether it's production, how you're producing, you know, for example, for us, our D kids, the kids channel, 
uh, we've been able to bring in 100 new episodes during the lockdown because the animators are still creating new content sitting out of home. So it is possible to make create new content as well, uh, which was, uh, you know, six months ago, if somebody had said that you have to run a, yeah. a, a television network sitting out of home, you would have right. laughed at them. But the practic it's practically happening. We're doing it. So hence, that's another aspect in the way of new doing new, new things in a different way. I mean, doing things in a new way is what's going to happen. Yes, ad films have been uh, um, shot from home. Ad films so, have been uh, yeah, produced. And... We've produced shows uh, uh, for a particular client, which is all being done, uh, you know, uh, indigenously sitting out of home. You know, actual production is happening. So I think that it's 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 how you really see it you know the glass half full approach and and i think that's been that's a positive attitude to be bringing into the mix yeah. to sunil's point it is up to us as an industry to bring it back to where it was but it, till that happens we don't have to sit and whine about it we have to find solutions move on and get on with it and True. that's the attitude will keep us all keep the engines going you know I, i've always joked about you know, the, the terms a, BC and AC have a new meaning in the new world order. Before, uh, so uh, nowhere, uh, you know, we are, we are a before Corona world and an after Corona world. And right. after Corona world is a very, very different world. And we just have to accept that. Yes. So I'm told time is up. What I'll do is I'll quickly come to all of you with uh, one last round of question. What I want to know from is we're sitting in May uh, 2020. Let's look a year out, 12 months from now. May 2021, what are your two or three uh, predictions on how will this fundamentally change the ecosystem that we all operate in? Abhishek, why don't we start with you? So, um, I think we, one critically is, um, as an industry, we've kind of worked on certain very set rules. And like Mega said, um, a lot of the rules have changed from work from home, where no one thought of production from home. Um, and I think a lot more focus on what is um, really required to make the show would, would come back into focus. So therefore, you would see a lot of different types of programming actually coming out uh, with a lot of focus on cost and other safety measures. Um, but on the whole, I think um, we are a little optimistic about the content production business as such as compared to the others because um, luckily for what is right now hitting the linear television, unfortunately, but luckily we have a balancing act in the OTT players who are commissioning right now. So we we see the demand for content to grow as everyone has said it in different things, but I think we, we see that a little more faster. So by May, we are hoping that um, a lot of things would have possibly come back to normal for the content producers, at least from that genre of the business, at least. Okay. Sunil? So I think uh, a few things will emerge. One, I will tell you what we are doing at Bach because I think it's first fair for me to say what we are doing, right? We right. are making our business leaner. We are making it more sustainable. We have already given up eight or nine of the places that we worked in. 33% of our staff is going work from home, right? Uh, right now, everybody 100%, but we have taken a call, 33% is mm. going work from home. We have enabled our company to be like this. We have bought our costs down. I mean, we have wiped out 20 crores of costs straight away this year. As an example, we are wiping out more so that, you know, we as a company can do more using less resources too. Like I said, we are exploring better tools and we are exploring things in digital. So we can, we can operate with transparency for a bigger ecosystem than just television alone. I think that's important to us. I think the broadcaster side, I see a 5% attrition of channels at the bottom of the channels, right? just not doing the same business that they were doing. Easily 5 to 8% that's going to happen. They're going to shut their business or they're not going to want to continue in this business because it's, it's, it's been a terrible time in that business. I also see that there will be very smart programming that will emerge from some of the broadcasters, which will change perhaps the way programming is consumed or which will change yes. uh, the, the pecking order, if nothing else, right? so to speak. Uh, I also believe that TV has more confidence today from the cynics than it had ever before. So I see some of those who had walked out of television coming back. The big, the big ticket programming, if IPL takes place, it brings in big confidence into the industry. Right? 
There are some big ticket events in television, which coincidentally happen only in the later part of the year, post September. So if all of those start coming back in terms of production, it brings the confidence back. I think it's important to drive the GDP and the industry should do that. If the resources exist, people will invest in television. If not now, a little later. There will be a delay, but I don't think growth will go away. And we don't know. It's only March, April, May. We don't know what June, July, August is about. I don't think anybody can predict that. So the next three months are going to be crucial for the next 12 months ahead. It's likely somebody will have a terrific September 2020 to August 2021. Yes. Right? But these six months are like dead. Yes, that's correct. Vivek? So I think, uh, you know, uh, primarily uh, three key things from my perspective. One is uh, cost efficiencies and uh, a lot of the companies will adopt digital in far, you know, uh, far more progressive manner. So therefore, digital transformation will lead to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, efficiencies or as regard as far as cost is concerned, that will uh, be one key thing, uh, which uh, almost all of us are talking about. Uh, cost efficiencies will come in purely, uh, one, from adoption of technology, second, from being far more leaner in our operation system. So whether it's, you know, letting go of, uh, of office space or letting go of people or letting go of the extreme, you know, uh, the, the, the flap that we had in the system, those kind of things will be, will, 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 will be important. The second important thing will, which broadcasters will now start have to start doing is uh, we'll have to start investing into newer streams of revenue. We spoke about pay TA versus, uh, you know, uh, free, free to air versus pay. Uh, I think uh, more and more we'll realize that advertising as a stream of revenue will, will grow at a much, uh, you know, a slower pace as compared to others. So therefore you will have to have alternative streams of revenue uh, moving forward, whether it's digital, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, on ground events, whether it's live, whether, you know, whether it's any, anything else, but newer sources of revenues will have to come into the picture. And third uh, is that consumption as we move forward into the next year, this is this, this period of two, three months has virtually changed the way we are consuming television. This heightened consumption of content is not going to go down just uh, you know because we've got down uh, gotten out of the, uh, of the lockdown so consumption of content will be far more than what it was you know uh, 6 months back so these three things will 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 happen as we move to the next year uh, next year around the same time fantastic mega So uh, <clears throat> over and above to what everyone has said, uh, I think that's the general sentiment. Uh, I also feel that I think what we do not need further is uh, the regulator intervening anymore into our lives. <laughs> so that's a tough um, one. You know, in uh, we <laughs> so that is something I really hope we don't have to deal with. Uh, uh, you know, in, with with already with such bad year. The last thing you need is further to deal with some of those challenges. Uh, fortunately, uh, NTO 2.0 has been pushed back, but um, but that's that's my concern because I, I, the industry cannot afford any further um, you know taking us off track because it's it's already a very very tough year as we've already established. Uh, we're just trying to about to make the ends meet uh, and to just to start now revisiting and re uh, inventing some of these regulatory challenges which, which we keep getting threatened with uh, is something I am um, very, very, I'm hope, I'm hope, I hope that it, that does, that's not something we'll have to deal with. And so I hope that by May next year, uh, to your point, um, Nabil, is that uh, we will be back in a position of strength and, uh, you know, let bygones be bygones and start focusing on how we redevelop, rebuild our uh, industry in a strong way. That's a message of hope. Ajay, my question, will broadcasters get good rates in May 2021? <laughs> yeah, I think things will start coming back to normal. Uh, and and uh, the it's damage... So magic, <laughs> relative, everything is relative. So if you're down to <laughs> 10, you'll have 20, which is 100% growth. <laughs> correct, 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 correct. So yeah, um, it it will take a bit now. It will take a bit to come back to uh, our our current levels, the way things are going right now. Uh, but yes, a few things that that we see changing at least is, uh, like everyone else said, work from home uh, will become uh, uh, more of a reality. As in, people will start looking at 
how we can reduce usage of the office. Uh, travel will certainly go down. Uh, I used to travel for about four days a week uh, previously, pre pre March. I don't see that happening again. Uh, and you know, we've got used to this kind of communication, and this should continue. Uh, yes. Digitization will certainly increase. Uh, so digital billing is happening now. Uh, transfer of money is happening digitally. So all of that is going to continue because uh, people have seen the benefit and the efficiency in all of that. So that will definitely continue. Um, in terms of media, I think OTT, uh, see content will, will remain to be important and will possibly, as someone said, will grow in importance. And therefore, OTT uh, will, will start, uh, you know, the tipping point of OTT will become closer. Uh, and I think that that is certainly going to happen. Uh, on a, on a lighter note, uh, people will start uh, paying a little more attention to the, uh, to the you know, household products that they buy because you are going to be getting used to doing some stuff yourself. <laughs> so yeah, like Sunil was mentioning, I mean, uh, dishwashers have sold out in uh, a place like Nanded. So, right, right, right. so that, that's certainly <laughs> going to be there. And, and uh, you know, homes are going to become a little bit more equipped. Uh, I personally didn't have an office chair. I've gone and got myself one. I needed a stabilizer for my Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, those kind of things are certainly going to, uh, you know, come into come into play. Fantastic. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, short on time. Uh, we'll have to finish the session before I end. Thank you, Sunil, Abhishek, you. Vivek, Mega, Ajay. Two, three key takeaways. Uh, uh, you know, economy is resilient. Hopefully, things will be better off by the time the festive season comes around. Importantly, broadcasters, the television ecosystem, is a very good time to uh, experiment, do uh, bolder things, do newer format shows. Uh, the uh, confidence in the television ecosystem continues, but at the same time, rates obviously will be under pressure because of lesser advertising. Uh, you know, uh, talent size, uh, as Abhishek said, there will be revision in cost. And Mega made a very relevant point. The trend of brand solutions, which were picked up over the last two three years, will come, come become even more, uh, you know, accentuated now because clients will seek more ROI from television. So with that, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining us on a Wednesday afternoon. We look forward to seeing you soon on another webinar. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Nava.